Well, good morning, friends. It is mid-morning here, and uh, I am working on my second cup of coffee for the day. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I thought, hey, you know what? I haven't done a coffee with Crystal in, like, forever, I think. So, I decided to come down here. It is an absolutely gorgeous day out. Uh, it's supposed to get really hot. Um, I guess the heat wave that's affecting everybody else in the United States is finally making its way up to my little corner of the world. So, We've got, uh, you know, upper 90s and 100 degree temperatures coming for the next several days. So I also thought it'd be good to get out here in the morning and uh, have my little chat with you guys uh, before it gets too hot. I think you can see my, uh, the little chicken coop, the chicken mansion back there. Uh, it still hasn't been painted just between uh, the, uh, all, all the rainy spring days we had and then my uh, son-in-law, who's, uh, this is his project and he, um, uh, has been working like crazy. He's in construction. So now that the weather's nice, the rain is done, he's just working like crazy. So time is at a premium and who knows, but for now the chickens still seem to like it whether it's painted or not. <laughs> yeah, so in today's Coffee with Crystal, I just wanted to have just a little chat with you all. I um, posted a video a while back, a Joyful homemaking tips on how to have to be more joyful with your homemaking and I can leave a link to it up here if you didn't see it but you know it brought about with a couple of the comments that I got from that it really uh, it really made me think uh, about homemaking and uh, it is homemaking just for mothers you know there seems to be that uh, that is the overwhelming message I see when I look around at blogs and homemaking websites or, you know, YouTube channels or whatnot, is that, you know, it's always women with children and families. And, um, and that is because it's, it's like an obvious when you have a family and you have children being at home and taking care of them just kind of seem to go hand in hand. And, and so homemaking is highlighted quite a bit. It's, it magnifies the view of homemaking because you have a family. But in there, there comes a point where not all of us are going to have children. Uh, and when I say it that way, I mean like my, myself. I mean, I had eight children, but they're all grown up now. I do not have that responsibility anymore. Uh, I am not a mom of a large family anymore. I am basically an empty nester. Um, somebody asked me about that too in the comments and so my daughter her husband and children grandchildren they do live with us but we created our own little living area you know little apartment or whatever you want to call it it's our own little living area so we have I have my own tiny kitchen I have my own little tiny living area and we just turned the house over to them we felt that that would make a more successful uh, situation for us all if uh, they could just do their life and we do our life so even though they're in my home I uh, I don't have that responsibility they're not my responsibility so I consider myself an empty nester I, and um, and then there are women who have just never been able to have children and you might have young women who are single and you might have women that um, I don't have children yet. You, there's a whole range of people out there that are potential homemakers that don't have children. And one of the things that I found really interesting was I had spent my entire life, I had my first child when I was 18, so I had spent basically my entire life uh, raising, having my eight children and raising them. And uh, you don't think when you're in the middle of it that those days will ever come to an end. You are just in the thick of it and you know you are just doing life and, and enjoying your life and you really don't foresee that day when you won't have any more children in the home. And it was, uh, it was a hard reality I think for me as uh, my children began to leave one by one and some would leave and come back and you know whatever the situation was that uh, but eventually they all left. And, um, I, you know, it made me at that point kind of go, wow, okay, now what? What is my purpose? I'm looking all around. I'm looking outside the home. I'm looking everywhere, wondering, is that my purpose? Should I pursue this? Should I pursue that? What, what is my purpose? And 
You know, I had to come to the realization that number one, I absolutely love being at home, whether I was at home with eight kids or whether I'm at home with my husband and I. I love being at home and I love taking care of my home. And because of society's views on this, uh, you know, well, you know, now it's time to do something for you. Now it's time for this or that. You know, you, you end up feeling like that same pressure that maybe I felt years ago when I made the choice to be a stay-at-home mom uh, and then society didn't look kindly on that because don't I want to pursue something for me? It was like all of a sudden, all these years later, all of that kind of came right back on me, that societal pressure. And uh, I, it, it took me, it took me a while, a lot of soul searching, a lot of praying, and a lot of coming to terms with the fact that I was, it was okay for me to be a stay-at-home wife. It was okay for me to still enjoy doing the exact same things that I had been doing. I enjoyed still taking care of my husband. I enjoyed packing lunches for his work days. I enjoyed cleaning my house. I enjoyed, uh, you know, reaching out to other people, my children, and to be available for them if they needed help with things. I enjoyed uh, bringing my family together for uh, family events and cooking large batches of food when they would come. I enjoyed uh, spending time with friends. I still enjoyed all the same things that I enjoyed while I had eight children and it was okay for me to continue with that. We all have homes, whether we're single, whether we're newly married, whether we have children, whether we don't have children, whether we, have, we are an empty nest, we all have a home. And I think it's a myth that being a stay-at-home wife is something that is only for women with children. I really loved this article I was reading on homemaking and uh, the author has a book and I am sitting outside with no uh, internet access <laughs> so I can't stop and look it up so I'm gonna look it up and put it down here at the bottom of the screen for you so that you know who it was and her book her book definitely piqued my interest and it's something I might look into getting, but I, d I did want to read a quote that I copied onto my phone so I could read it to you. Christians are conceived by God's Holy Spirit and born of God. Jesus has gone to prepare a place for us, a home. He serves us his body as our food and his blood as our drink. God makes a home for us with himself. And from John 14, 23, Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my father will love, will love him and we will come to him and make our home with him. So in many ways, her point was, is that we are living out a very much smaller version of that very big picture. And I just loved that. I really enjoyed uh, just that perspective because we just don't hear these positive good perspectives on homemaking anymore. Well, I mean, we do some in places uh, for sure, but it's not loud and it's not as loud as the opposition for sure. I remember when my youngest children were getting to be in their late teen years and I had a lady come up to me. We were at an event and uh, she said, well, you know, now that your children are gone, you know, what are, what are your plans now? What are you going to go do now? And uh, it was just that same societal view that, uh, that it was just, it was just prevalent everywhere I turned. And uh, when I told her that I was going to continue to stay at home, she was really shocked by that. You know, it was like, why would you do that? Why would you? And of course, she was uh, a younger mom and had kids. And so it's easy to see when you're in the thick of raising children, how looking to something else other than what you're doing, especially if you are not uh, taking that homemaking um, heart and mind you know, deeply inside of you and living out that 
that the wonderful life that it could be I don't know if that was her case or not so I'm certainly not making any judgment on that but uh, you know that you might be looking out and thinking oh there should be something different I could be doing with my time and so again we just have these societal views and so to read something like this lady's comment uh, was very refreshing and like I said I would I'm very much interested in getting her book because I would like to see what else she had to say when I'm talking about being a homemaker I am not referring to a woman that does not work outside the home I believe Believe that you can be a homemaker and work outside the home I don't see any reason why you can't if that is your choice and I believe that uh, no matter what we all have a home I don't believe that a homemaker can shouldn't earn money or can't earn money Proverbs 31 you know she considers a field and buys it and with her profits she plants a vineyard she was obviously very much an industrious type of woman that uh, you know was always doing something in all directions including earning money I tend to look at homemaking as something that uh, as I mentioned in joyful homemaking that homemaking is a calling it is something that that God has called us to do he's called us to do this to take care of our homes to take care of our husbands to take care of our children if we have them and to uh, to invest our our uh, heart in that direction uh, uh, you know it's a ministry it's a work uh, nobody might think anything about it if a woman decided to head into some ministry field uh, but yet Yet here is one that's right in front of her right in her home and homemakers are it's like I said it's not an optional thing we all have homes we all need to ha to be invested in our homes and uh, and to provide that uh, that environment that haven that safe haven that spot uh, that peaceful place I mean that is where our home is where we go to be refreshed our home is where we go to uh, you know invite people and to uh, bring in other people for hospitality if, if we feel called to do that it is the place where we nurture it is the place where we cook and feed and provide it is a very important aspect of our life I really think this was a this is a, a great quote by C.S. Lewis I don't know maybe you've already heard it it's been around obviously for a while but uh, he said the homemaker has the ultimate career all other careers exist for one purpose only and that is to support the ultimate career I don't know about you but I had to really think about that one for quite a while but you know it is it, it's kind of in my mind it's kind of like this full circle where you know we create the home that refreshes that provides that gives that like I said that safe spot that safe haven it nourishes we are nurtured in a home and from the home we are able to go out our husbands are able to go out in the world if we are a stay-at-home wife or mom uh, or uh, you know or if we work we're able to go out into that world to provide which then provides for that home and for the, the the things that we need that are in that home which we can then turn into that wonderful safe haven that wonderful spot on uh, for us all I know that when I looked for my purpose at that period of time in my life that I really ultimately felt like uh, that I still was a, I still was a homemaker and it was still okay to be that and that I really wanted this to be uh, my ministry and my way of reaching out what I find today uh, you know I've been in empty nest now for six or seven years I think uh, and what I find today is that I still enjoy so many of the same exact things that I did when I had kids at home and I <clears throat> excuse me and I enjoyed I enjoy cooking food I enjoy keeping a clean house I enjoy canning I enjoy all of these things that go into making my house a home just as much as I did when I had children when I had children it seemed like that was the reason that I was doing it and it was of course but that reason hasn't changed I still have a home I still need to have food I still need to you know uh, provide and prepare and to do all those same things uh, for my husband and for myself and that it is okay to enjoy this life and to live this homemaking life even without children I would love to hear your thoughts and your views and you know what what do you think about homemaking for basically everyone that has a home uh, you know is is okay it is uh, 
homes aren't optional and we all need to be taking care of our homes whether we do it full-time and and stay there or you know stay at home work full and don't work full-time or we work outside the home part-time i think it's good to remember that no matter what that purpose it can be very much just right in your home taking care of your home still even though the children are gone or you don't have children or you're single and you're waiting to have children and knowing that someday you're going to have a home and being better prepared for that now with that heart and that understanding is uh, fantastic so anyway okay guys i'm going to cut this off now and uh, let me know like i said your comments i would love to hear from them and i hope you guys are staying cool and uh, and surviving the summer if you're having a really hot one all right, everybody. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye-bye.